Denmark's integration of the Cardom 10 mortar system into its Piranha 5 armored personnel carriers marks a pivotal advancement in the Royal Danish Army's pursuit of modern, mobile, and lethal indirect fire support. This development, blending cutting-edge Israeli mortar technology with a Swiss-designed wheeled platform, reflects Denmark's broader military modernization strategy aimed at enhancing its NATO commitments and national defense capabilities. The Piranha 5, an 8x8 wheeled APC crafted by General Dynamics European Land Systems MOAG, was selected in 2015 to replace Denmark's aging M113 tracked vehicles and earlier Piranha variants, offering superior mobility, protection, and adaptability. Paired with the Cardom 10, a 120mm autonomous mortar system from Elbit Systems, boasting a 10km range, automated targeting, and multiple rounds. Simultaneous impact capabilities, this configuration equips Danish forces with a formidable tool for contemporary battlefields. The system's ability to fire from within the vehicle's armored interior ensures crew safety, a critical factor in modern warfare where counterbattery threats loom large. The context for this upgrade lies in Denmark's evolving defense priorities. Facing a shifting security landscape, including Russia's assertive posture in the Baltic region and increased demands for NATO interoperability, Denmark has pivoted toward expeditionary forces capable of rapid deployment. The Cardom 10 equipped Piranha 5 addresses the need for indirect fire support that is both precise and protected moving beyond legacy systems like the M109A3 self-propelled howitzers. This shift aligns with a Danish emphasis on versatility, enabling the Army to support infantry operations domestically and abroad, from Arctic patrols tied to Greenland's strategic importance to multinational missions under NATO or UN banners. The decision to integrate a mortar system into a wheeled platform rather than a tracked one reflects a calculated trade-off. Prioritizing speed and road mobility over off-road ruggedness, a choice suited to Denmark's flat terrain and its focus on rapid response in coalition operations. This strategic pivot was underscored by Denmark's 2018 defense agreement, which allocated funds for capability enhancements amid rising regional tensions. The procurement process began in December 2015 with a 600 million USD contract for 309 Piranha 5 vehicles in six variants, infantry carrier, command post, ambulance, engineer, mortar carrier, and repair unit, highlighting a comprehensive fleet overhaul. In 2017, a 15.3 million USD deal with ESL Advanced Information Technology, an Austrian firm partnering with Elbit Systems, secured 15 Cardom 10 systems with an option for six additional units, complete with fire control and battle management integration. This acquisition was not just a hardware purchase, but a collaborative effort involving Danish, Swiss, and Israeli defense industries, with GDEL's MOAG tasked with marrying the Cardom 10 to the Piranha chassis in Switzerland. The process faced scrutiny over costs and timelines, but Denmark's defense acquisition and logistics organization justified it as a long-term investment in operational readiness, with plans to amortize expenses over decades of service. Deliveries kicked off with a ceremonial handover of initial Piranha 5s on May 17, 2017, in Kreuzlingen, Switzerland, followed by pre-series testing to refine integration. The Cardom 10 variant entered service in late 2019, with the full fleet rollout extending through 2023, a schedule occasionally delayed by supply chain hiccups, but ultimately met. Organized into platoons of four mortar carriers, each supported by command and ammunition vehicles, the system underwent extensive trials across Western Denmark's ranges, validating its mobility, firing accuracy, and crew ergonomics. Its role is clear to provide rapid, accurate fire support, delivering suppressive barrages, smoke screens, illumination rounds, or precision strikes, while keeping crews safe inside the vehicle's armored shell. With a firing rate of up to 16 rounds per minute and automation-reducing crew workload, 
the Cardom 10 enhances responsiveness, making it a vital asset for dynamic operations. The system's MRSI capability, allowing multiple rounds to hit simultaneously, amplifies its tactical impact, offering commanders a tool to overwhelm adversaries swiftly. Implementation saw GDELS MOAG integrate the mortar onto the chassis, incorporating Denmark's Weibel MVRS 700SC muzzle velocity radar and Thor fire control system for pinpoint accuracy, a process validated through 2019 trials. The Cardom 10 operates from a floor-based mount, a design choice that maximizes internal space while maintaining a low profile, though it requires precise vehicle positioning for optimal firing. Crew training was a significant focus, with Danish personnel mastering the system's digital interface and automated laying features, a leap from the manual processes of older mortars. Logistical support was bolstered by a 30-year sustainment agreement with s -Late, covering spares, software updates, and technical assistance, ensuring the fleet's longevity. As of April 2025, the system is fully operational, with recent activities likely encompassing NATO exercises, such as the annual Baltic operations and live fire drills, reflecting Denmark's active alliance role. Cold weather tests in the Arctic, um, tied to Denmark's Greenland responsibilities, and desert trials in the U.S. underscore its environmental adaptability, preparing it for diverse theaters. The impact on Denmark is profound, bolstering deterrence and expeditionary prowess while reinforcing its reputation as a reliable NATO partner. The system strengthens Denmark's contribution to collective defense, particularly in the Baltic region, where rapid response capabilities counter Russian hybrid threats. Economically, it sustains limited domestic jobs through subcomponent work. Weibel's radar contribution, for instance, but assembly abroad tempers local gains, a point of debate in Danish defense circles. Regionally, it sets a technological benchmark, potentially inspiring neighbors like Sweden or Norway to pursue similar upgrades and fosters defense ties with Switzerland and Israel. Its presence enhances NATO's northern flank, signaling resolve amid geopolitical uncertainty. Comparing the Piranha 5 Cardom 10 to regional competitors reveals its unique strengths and trade-offs. Sweden's CV90, with the Mjolnir 120mm mortar, a tracked platform, offers superior cross-country mobility and armor, suited to Sweden's forested terrain, but lacks the Piranha's road speed and wheel deficiency, critical for rapid Baltic deployments. Norway's prospective adoption of the Patria Nemo, a turreted 120mm mortar, provides a lighter, amphibious alternative with a 360-degree firing arc, yet its range, around 7 to 8 kilometers, and automation lag behind the Cardom 10's 10-kilometer 10 reach and MRSI edge. Finland's AMOS system, mounted on tracked chassis, delivers twin-barreled firepower, outgunning the Danish setup in raw volume with a higher rate of fire, but its complexity, weight, and cost contrast with the Piranha's streamlined, cost-effective design. The Danish system excels in mobility, crew protection, and NATO interoperability, though its wheeled nature may limit it in rugged terrain compared to tracked rivals, a compromise Denmark accepts given its operational focus. Beyond technical metrics, the Piranha 5 Cardom 10's integration reflects a doctrinal evolution, it embodies Denmark's shift from static defense to a proactive, coalition-oriented posture, prioritizing deployability over territorial entrenchment. This aligns with NATO's emphasis on agile, networked forces, where systems like the Cardom 10's Thor FCS integration enable seamless data sharing with allies. Critics argue it lacks the raw punch of heavier artillery, but proponents counter that its precision and responsiveness suit modern fluid conflicts. Think Ukraine-style engagements, better than traditional barrages. The system's impact extends to training and morale, with Danish crews reportedly embracing its user-friendly automation, a stark contrast to the labor-intensive M113 era.